We are going to simplify radical expressions by multiplying and dividing radicals together. So let's review real quick the product and quotient rule property of roots. So if we have a root times another root, we just multiply those two things together. Okay, so if we have like the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 3, would be the cube root of 5 times 3, which is 15. That is where we, we were using to simplify radicals. Maybe we had like the square root of 27 and we would split that up into like 9 and 3. Um, there's also the quotient product. Quotient product. The quotient property. All right. So you can have... If you divide two radicals, you can write them together as a division under one radical, so a radicand of one. So if we had, um, let's say the square root of 16 divided by the square root of eight, that would be 16 divided by eight, which is two. So we're gonna, multiply and divide radicals today. So first we're going to multiply radicals. So um, you can use the product property of radicals to multiply radicals with the same index. Okay, so we're going to multiply them together with the same index. So you can multiply with different indexes, um, but you have to um, use what's called uh, rational exponents, which is something we'll talk about later. So you can use the Product, property of radicals, <laughs> to multiply radicals with the same index. Um, whoops, that's how you spell with. The same index. One thing I want you to note, and let's write this down. So let's write note. Numbers, and this isn't very fancy speak, so numbers outside the radical radical, so the coefficients, um, radical get multiplied together. All right, so the coefficients and the numbers or expressions inside the radical. So the radicands get multiplied together. All right, so you wouldn't multiply something inside a radical times something outside a radical. All right. All right, so let's do some examples. So let's look at number one. Number one is a distribution problem. So I'm going to take this term and multiply it times both of those. So I'm going to do the cube root of two times the cube root of four. And I'm going to do plus the cube root of two times the cube root of 12. So the cube root of two times the cube root of four is eight. Two times four is eight. And the cube root of eight is two. The cube root of two times 12 is 24. Oh, and that can be simplified because eight goes in there three times. And the cube root of eight is two. So you multiply the radicands together and then see if what's inside the new radicand or a radical can be simplified. So two times four is eight. The cube root of eight is two. The cube root of two times the cube root of 12 is 24. 24 can be divided by eight, which is a perfect cube. Cube root of eight is, whoops. Cube root of eight is two. And I should have made that a three because um, eight times three is 24, not eight times two. <laughs> so make sure you have a three there. 
Let's look at the next one. So here I'm going to do distribute 2 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 15 plus 2 square root of 3 times 3 square root of 60. So we're going to have 2 square root of 45. 3 times 15 is 45 plus 2 times 3. So this 2 times this 3 is 6. And then this 3 times this 60 is 180. So 2 times 3 multiplied together because they're the two coefficients and the two radicands, 3 and 60, get multiplied together. Now we need to see if these can be simplified. So 2 um, square root of 45 can be because 9 is a perfect square. Um, that goes into 45 five times, and the square root of 9 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, so this will be 6 square roots of 5. For the next one, let's see, the biggest perfect square that goes into 180 is 36. Oh, and it also goes in there five times. I think we're going to have some like radicals here. Square root of 36 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Yep, they're like. So I get 42 square roots of 5. How did I get 42? I did 6 plus 36, which is 42. Again, multiply your coefficients together, multiply your radicands together. So let's look at number three. So for this one, we need to distribute twice. And so now you hear that called the full method. So I need to do two times both of these. And then I need to do three square roots of seven times both of them. And sometimes you hear that called the FOIL method because it's the first outside, inside, last. All right. So we're going to do two times four. And then we're going to do 2 times the square root of 7. And then we're going to do 3 square roots of 7 times 4. And then 3 square roots of 7 times the square root of 7. So 2 times 4 in the square root of 7. And then 3 square roots of 7 times both of those as well. All right. 2 times 4 is 8. And then 2 times the square root of 7 is just 2 square roots of 7. I'm going to multiply 3 times 4 and get 12 square roots of 7 on this one. And now here comes something, a new, something important. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 would be the square root of 49. The square root of 49 is just 7. And then 3 times 7 is 21. But I want you to notice, whenever you have a square root, and this only works for square roots, doesn't work for any other root, times a square root, it's the same as saying that squared, which is just x. All right? So the square root of 9, well, let's do 8, times the square root of 8 is 8. The square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is 10. Okay? So that's something neat about square roots. That's because the square root and something squared are inverses of one another. All right, let's bring down these other terms. All right, so 8 plus 2 square roots of 7 plus 12 square roots of 7. And let's combine anything that's like. So 8 and 21. 8 plus 21 is 29. And then these two are like. So I can do 2 plus 12, which would be 14 square roots of Seven. So if you have two terms being multiplied by two terms, you can do um, distribute twice. So this, the two times both of them, three square roots of seven times both of them. One of the most common peop mistakes people make when they're um, simplifying these type of problems is when they see an expression squared, they think, oh, square the five, square three, square roots of five. But you're not. You're not just squaring. You're not just doing this. That's wrong. Okay? You actually are squaring the whole expression. So it's this times itself. 
And it looks like that previous question we just did, and we're going to do the same thing where we're going to multiply first five times both, both this one and this one. So five times five, five times negative three square roots of five. Notice I made that minus sign a negative. Don't forget about that sign. Then I'm going to multiply this times both of them. So negative 3 square roots of 5 times 5. Whoops, that is sloppy. Negative 3 square roots of 5 times 5. And negative 3 square roots of 5 times negative 3 square roots of 5. All right, five times five is 25. Negative three square roots of five times five is negative 15 square roots of five. Remember, we just multiply those numbers on the outside together. Then we have another negative 15 square roots of five. Then we're gonna have negative three times negative three is a positive nine. So I did negative three times negative three. And then remember, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. All right, so let's bring all that down. So 25 minus 5, square roots of 5, minus 15, square roots of 5. I might have said 5, square roots of 5, but it's 15, plus 45. All right, so let's combine things that are like 25 plus 45 is going to be 70. Is that right? 70. I'm going to double check my math on that. Hold on. Okay, it is 70. Good. And then negative 15 square roots of 5 minus 15 square roots of 5 is negative 30 square roots of 5. All right, let's look at number 5. So number 5, we're now going to multiply the square root of y times both of these. And then the negative square root of 7 times both of them. All right, so square root of y times the square root of y, then the square root of y times the square root of 7, then negative 7 square root of y times the square root of y, and then negative square root of 7 times the square root of 7. y, the square root of y times the square root of y is y. Then we have plus the square root of 7y, and then minus the square root of 7y, because y times 7 is just 7y, and 7 times y is 7y. And then minus, because we have a negative times a positive, the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is 7. Plus the square root of, square root of 7y, minus the square root of 7y, they cancel each other out. All right, and then I have y minus 7 left over. All right, let's look at number 6. So for number 6, again, we have to write this out. 15 minus 4. Uh, cube roots of 5, and then cube root of 15 minus another 4 cube roots of 5. All right, so now we're going to do the cube root of 15, and we're going to multiply it times the cube root of 15 in minus 4 cube roots of 5. So cube root of 15 and the cube root of 15 times 4 cube roots of 5. Now we're going to multiply negative 4 cube roots of 5 times both of them. So negative 4 cube roots of 5 times 3 cube roots of 15. And negative 4 cube roots of 5 times another negative 4. And I'm running out of room. Cube roots of 5. Oh, just made it. All right. The cube root of 15 times the cube root of 15 is going to be the cube root of 15 times 15, which is 225. And then plus, because we have a positive times a positive, 4 
cube roots of 15 times 5, which is um, 75, and then minus Look at here. There should be a minus sign right here. So this should be a minus 4. So that should be a minus 4. Look. See that minus sign there? This should have had a minus. All right. So then another minus 4. Cube roots is 75. And then negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. Cube roots of 5 times 5 is 25. All right, I don't think 225 is divisible by a perfect cube. I think the only one, 225, no, it's not. So this gets brought down. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. And then the cube root, 75 is indivisible by a perfect cube. And then 16. Cube roots of 25, and 25 is not a perfect cube. So, when you have something squared, you got to write it out twice, and then you multiply the first term times both the, the terms in the second guy and the second term. Be careful of your signs. <laughs> Don't be like Miss Collier. Be careful of your signs. All right, now we're going to talk about dividing radicals. And in algebra 2, we only talk about square roots. Okay, we keep it to square roots we um, are dividing radicals and we call it rationalizing the denominator so if there is a square root in the denominator in the denominator it is not simplified okay so if you look at number one two um, five we'll talk about or three we'll talk about in a second and then four see how they all have roots in the denominator that means that they have an irrational number in the denominator so we want to make it rational so we call it rationalizing the denominator so you can remove it by multiplying the numerator and the denominator, numerator and denominator, denominator by the root. Let me show you why this works. And this only works for square roots. For cube roots and all the other type of roots, there's an extra step. Okay, but for square roots, like I said previously in this video, Remember if we multiply the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, I said, hey, that's just going to be 5. As long as we multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by the same number, you're technically multiplying it by 1. So on the top, now we have 3 square roots of 5, and on the bottom, 5. So that's been rationalized. 5 is a rational number, square root of 5 isn't. So we're rewriting... Um, are fractions without a root in the denominator because that's in order to be simplified that has to be the case one of the reasons for that is because now I can write that as three-fifths square roots of five and I can add it to other denominators or sorry other radicals all right all right so let's look at number two we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of eight so I get 4 square roots of 48 over 8. Um, 48 can be divided by 4, which is a perfect square. So I'm going to have 4. And 4 goes in there. Um, oh, actually, I think 48 is divisible by a bigger one. It's divisible by 16. And it goes in there three times. The square root of 16 is 4. And I get 16 thirds over 8. 16 over 8 is just 2. 
So it's two square roots of three. Okay, so I reduce that fraction, 16 divided by eight is three. So top and bottom by eight, six times eight is 48. On the bottom, I just have eight. Then I simplify the square root of 48, giving me 16 square roots of three on the top, divided by eight, which is two. All right, let's look at number three. So first thing I do with number three is I'm gonna separate it into two. All right. Um, so that way I can rationalize the denominator. All right. The square root of 49 is seven. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that right now. And then I just multiply top and bottom by the square root of five. On the bottom, I'm going to get five. And on the top, I'm going to get seven square roots of five. So if it's written, you have a fraction in the radical, you can separate it um, into two, so you can rationalize it. When you are rationalizing, and there is a two terms at the bottom, and one of those is a radical, how you can get rid of that is if you look back at the example we did, where we had a plus and a minus, of the um, of, of the same two terms, um, it canceled out. Kind of like, I don't know if you remember, so if you had like x plus 3 times x minus 3, we called that a difference of squares. Um, so you would have x times x, which is x squared. Then you'd have x times minus 3, which is negative 3x. Then you have 3 times x, which is 3x. And then 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. So I did this times both, this times both. So 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. And the middle's canceled, so you're left with x squared minus 9. So the first term squared minus the second term squared. We're going to use that same concept here. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of these two radicals by what's called the conjugate. So a conjugate is um, two expressions that are the exact same, except for one has a plus and one has a minus. So they're considered conjugate. So 5 plus the square root of 2 is a conjugate with 5 minus the square root of 2, just like x plus 3 is a conjugate of x minus 3. So on the top, we're going to have 3, or square root of 3 times 5, ignore this, <laughs> and then we're going to have the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 6. On the bottom, if we wrote that all out, so we did 5 times 5 is 25. Then we would have um, 5 times the square root of minus 2, which is negative 5 square roots of 2. So I did 5 times both of these. Then I'm going to do the square root of 2 of both. So the square root of 2 times 5. And minus the square root of 2 times plus the square root of 2, which is minus 2. These will cancel. So my... my um, Middle terms go away. My radicals go away. And then 25 minus 2 is 23. So that has been rationalized by getting rid of um, the radicals by multiplying by the conjugate. So multiply. you can multiply and divide radicals to simplify them. When you multiply, you multiply... Um, coefficients together, radicands together, and then simplify. For dividing, we're trying to get rid of the radical on the bottom, so we call it rationalizing the denominator. You multiply top and bottom by the same thing, either the radical or the conjugate of your expression.